today. Tune in for my first acupuncture session. Where, where, where are you sticking me? They're going in now? It's Ask Dr. Oz Day. I'm giddy, I'm giddy. Let me at him. Teeth bleaching, Botox, Brazilian waxes. You just said good question. The truth about cellulite. If you're gonna tell me something works today, I'm going this afternoon. The embarrassing problem millions suffer from. We're going there. Yes, there. So you're squeezing your <laughs> America's doctor answers your burning questions. People don't talk about it. Next. Dr. Mehmet Oz is here and raring to go. Tens of thousands of you have emailed us <laughs> your burning questions. And as you know, when you ask Dr. Oz, Almost nothing is off limits, because we did a whole show on poo. So, <laughs> yes. I'm it, giddy, I'm giddy. Yes, I'm okay. Adam. So we have a lot to cover, so we're going to get started. There's Angela right here. Angela, you had a question, and it is? Yes. Um, basically, Dr. Oz, I've had a lot of shoulder pain for a long time, and I've went and ha I had massages and things like that, and nothing seems to help. I thought about acupuncture, and I wanted to know, what did you think about that? You've had x-rays, I gather, to make sure nothing was yes. dislocated. Right, so I think acupuncture makes a lot of sense in that setting. Here's the irony. Acupuncture has been around for 2,500 years in China. There are a billion people in another part of the world who use these therapies. And in fact, for us to just now begin to grapple with it is a little bit surprising, but I absolutely would give it a shot. We're slow. We're slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I heard that you have agreed to uh, to have an acupuncture trial. Yes, yes. And you're Mr. Acupuncture Man. Yes. <laughs> OK. We're going to send her backstage in just a few, mom few moments. But first, Dr. Oz says that a lot of people are afraid to even try acupuncture because they think it looks painful. Don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do think a lot of needles is painful. I mean, yesterday I had my blood drawn, and just that was hard. Yep. Yep. But, so, th but these are very different needles. These are different and needles. Dr. Shu is going to show so you that. So I have agreed to test it out for y'all. Yes. <laughs> I've never done this before. And just like Angela, I've often wondered, what is it and how does it make you feel? As you may recall, though, that the last time I was stuck with a needle in front of an audience, it didn't go so well. <laughs> Don't move. Wait a minute, are you got it in place? No, seriously. Do you know where you're going? Yes. Oh, my oh. goodness. <laughs> You're gonna be, there's gonna be two clicks. Here's the first. Okay, so hopefully this is gonna go a little better. Oh, and people on. were like, are you, are you making that up? Hell no, I wasn't making that up. <laughs> yes, but now meet Daniel Chu. Daniel is a licensed acupuncturist in New York City who Dr. Oz recommended to us. So can you explain what is acupuncture? Well, like Dr. Oz said, acupuncture is uh, a form of Chinese medicine that's been used for thousands of years in China. It's, <laughs> it's come to America. It's, it's been here for about 20 some odd years or and so. And people have been using it for 2,000 years to do what? It treats uh, any condition from allergies to obviously pain to gastrointestinal issues, a wide range of chronic uh, diseases. Okay, isn't there something too you can just get it to just to feel like woohoo? Well, yeah, that's. <laughs> that's when you want that woohoo feeling. Absolutely, it's it's also used for wellness, and uh, and to to boost your immune system. So you don't have to actually be sick to get it. Would I notice a difference immediately? Well, the the effects are felt uh, anywhere between. 20 to 30 minutes, or even sometimes days afterwards. Oh, so I could be in the middle of a show and all of a sudden go, hoo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where do, you, where do I have to get stuck? For you today, it would be a more of a wellness sort of treatment. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, and what we'll do <laughs> is we'll, we'll just, we'll stick about uh, 10 needles in your body, very, very thin ones, very, very small, they're very thin. Should I hold her down? Yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll tie her no, down. Wait a now, so I was just saying that yesterday I, I had my I had a I went had a physical and I had the blood test blood taken. Is it that kind of needle? No, uh, actually they're very very thin. Okay. The needles that Dr. Shu is going to use yeah. would actually fit through the hole in the needle that they use to take the blood from your arm. Okay, that's good. That's how small they are. That's good. That's good. And so, am I going to feel it? I I, I hope <laughs> you'll feel good. Okay, so let's start. Okay. Where, where where are you sticking me? <laughs> Anywhere you'd like. Where, 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 where are you sticking me? <laughs> Two here. Okay. A couple in the feet. And couple in the feet. A couple in the feet, right. Good. Sarah Jessica Parker gave me these shoes. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, they lovely. Oh, nice. Absolutely lovely. Yeah. They're navy. It's so hard to find navy. Good navy. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, so, as, as these needles go in, <laughs> you're so excitable today. Go ahead. Just relax. So as these needles go in, what they're really going to do is they're going to be placed near nerves. And as these nerves are stimulated, when are, they, when are they going in? Not yet, not yet. <laughs> oh, they're, they're in. Okay. <laughs> That's good. They're going in now? No, 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 not now. I'm just, I'm, I'm just swabbing you. I'm just okay. swabbing you. So. Okay. So they go in close to nerves, but not in nerves, and they stimulate those nerves, which then send messages back to your brain. And then your brain releases a chemical called endorphin. That's what gives you the runner's high. And the endorphins are. Like, I'm going to get a runner's high right here. You're going to get it right now. And actually, that's the mechanism we think it works. And we actually have proven that. So the first one we're going to do is in the hand. In the hand. Thin. And I'm desensitizing the point. And did you feel anything? A little. <laughs> I felt a little. Felt a little. OK. Is, is a needle in there now? It's, done, it's, done. it's in there, okay, yes, okay, absolutely. Okay, good. You the next do, one I'm going to do is. You're going to do nine more? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to do a little less than that, a okay. little less than that. that. That wasn't bad, though. OK, the next one's going to be in the foot. Feel that? I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. I felt it. That wasn't bad, though. It's just no, it's not okay. as bad as getting your blood drawn. No, not no, at all. Not at Absolutely all. not at all. Okay. So the next one's going to be um, in, in the hand to again. Do another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pretty... look! I got. I... Oh, I, I, I kind of got the idea. <laughs> okay. I, I got the idea. Okay. That, that's what it feels like. That's what it feels it's like. Not bad. It's not bad. I'm not, gonna get a, I'm not going to get an endorphin rush from two, I know. No, but, no. But it's not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. So she's going to go back there and get how many? Uh, she's going to uh, get um, a few more. <laughs> a few more. Well, this was not bad. This was not bad. And when you take it out, it's nothing either, right? Nothing just, either. I'll oh. take it out right now. OK, good. Nothing. <laughs> it's not bad. This hurt my hand more than yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, OK. Oh, that didn't feel like anything. I couldn't yeah. feel that at all. So now Dr. Shu is going to take Angela backstage for a full acupuncture treatment. And we'll check in with them throughout the show to see how it's going. It's really not bad. OK. It's not as bad as getting your ears pierced. I can tell you that. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Fantastic. And your questions for Dr. Oz. Coming up, help for this woman who admits to a very embarrassing problem. Plus, to douche or not to douche? That's next. Dr. Mehmet Oz is back answering some of your burning questions and almost nothing is off limits, as you all know. And so I want to just talk about that acupuncture thing. Normally, you would have to get 14. Well, for the wellness program that Dr. Shu was going to use, that was, that's a typical number. But let's talk about what it really means. Yes. It stimulates endorphins, yes. which are a type of morphine that you naturally release. It also seems to change some of the neural hormones of the brain, in particular serotonin, which is one of the reasons we think it actually helps with mood a lot. And it also stimulates the immune system. But let's broaden the discussion, because it's not just about acupuncture. The reason I'm so excited and passionate about alternative medicine is, you know, Oprah, this show is watched all over the world. Yeah. Right? We have questions today from other continents. Yeah. And so we have global media. We have global banking, right? right? You can go with your bank card and put it in any bank machine you want anywhere in the world and get cash back in their currency. So why shouldn't there be global medicine? Bingo. Bingo. And alternative medicine is the globalization of medicine. That is fantastic. So, but are you saying that medical science is now being more open it's to more alternatives? Ironically, it's more open because we're beginning to catch up. Let's take energy as an example. Energy. Acupuncture at its very foundation is tapping into meridians of energy we can't actually see. You know, when I look at you out there, I actually see beams of light. That's what we're all about. It's what defines light as energy. A cell is defined as being alive if the membrane around it separates energy from the inside from the outside. We put those cells together into an organ, the heart. The heart has to have energy. Wow. Those organs into a body have to give us energy. Oprah, at the end of the day, Reiki, therapeutic touch, and prayer. I was going to ask about prayer. It's probably energy. And that's the beauty of it. We're beginning now to understand things that we know in our hearts are true, but we could never measure. Isn't oh. that something? You know, this is amazing because I've been doing this show, as you know, for a very long time. And I would say 10 years ago, I couldn't have gotten a doctor in America to say what you've just said. Well, as we get better at understanding how little we know about the body, we begin to realize that the next big frontier is energy medicine. It's not the mechanistic part of the joints moving. It's not the chemistry of our body. It's understanding for the first time how energy influences how we feel. Because we are all energy. Because we are energy. Isn't that exciting? I think that's exciting. It's very exciting. OK. This next question comes from Zandra. 
My name is Zandra, and I'm 55 years old, and I have a problem. Whenever I laugh, I pee. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's hardly anything. I carry extra sanitary pads. I try carrying extra underwear, wearing long skirts. I always carry extra clothing with me. Dr. Oz, what can I do? I've heard this from other people, actually. Yeah, I have a friend that every time she laughs, she has to run to the bathroom. Sandra, I am so proud you asked that question. No, I really am. <laughs> the, the biggest problem we have with this condition is that people don't talk about it. Doctors don't ask the patients. People are embarrassed to bring it up. Very simply, what happens is the bladder is like my fist. Right? It's above the muscles in the bottom of your pelvis. Right there. Right. So, and there's this little urethra, you know, a little tube that goes out and lets the pee pee out, right? <laughs> so, now that's what it normally looks like. When you have babies, or maybe you're made this way, or as you get older, the bladder actually will move its shape, unkink, and slip down into the muscles. And the muscles get a little bit flabby. Is that the bladder or the pee pee tube? <laughs> this is the pee pee tube, but it's connected to the bladder. Okay. <laughs> And the muscles are here. The muscles are suspending it. I was confused. <laughs> okay. Here, you be the muscles. Okay. Yeah. No, you be the, you, you, you're the pelvis. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the bladder's like this up here, and this is the pee pee tube, normally like that. Yeah. As you get older, this sags, and everything sort of folds through. Now, oh. when that happens, you no longer have this tight little angle. Older or when you've had a baby, or when you've had a baby. Both. Yeah. Having a baby, by the way, does it a lot. Don't panic. It often gets better. Yeah. Uh, and there's some exercises called Kegel exercises you can do. Yeah. You guys heard of that? So Kegel exercises, you know what? Best way to describe it is when you put your pants on. Yeah. You know, when you're trying to just shimmy into that tight little pair of jeans. Yeah. And you pull your bottom up and go like this and suck it down. <laughs> That's a Kegel exercise. It pulls your pelvis up. So. <laughs> is that wrong? That's right. Is that how you do it? Are you, are you, are you so you're squeezing your JJ? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you want to squeeze your JJ up. Yeah. But, but, but you, underneath, uh, under here, yeah. right, there's, there's a wall yeah. of muscle yeah. that needs to be firmed up. So when you go like this, you're actually tensing that muscle up. Yeah. That, by the way, when you do Eastern you know, martial arts and, and yoga, you yeah. actually practice tensing muscles you've never heard of. Zandra's looking at you, she's like, that's okay, I'll just keep <laughs> it. Now, one, one other thing, by the way, Zandra, this is important. If you do have the problem, <laughs> obviously, if the bladder is full, it leaks more. So go to the bathroom more frequently. Try to empty your bladder out if you're going into a social situation. Don't let people tickle you. <laughs> and, uh, and finally, of course, avoid caffe caffeinated beverages, because they'll make you pee like that, and you'll be out in the oh, party, really? and you can't go to the bathroom. Yeah. So have you ever been like somebody told a joke, and it's really funny, and you have to run out of the room? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have a friend like that. This next question comes all the way from Russia. 53-year-old Magda wrote this. I live in Russia, where many women douche. Oh, this is good but I've heard American women do not douche. Douching is a good thing, no? <laughs> Our mothers and grandmothers all did it. Isn't it a good way to stay clean? To douche or not to douche? <laughs> <laughs> the, the vagina is a self-cleaning oven. <laughs> Absolutely. There, there, no. there. Even the Tommy, the cameraman, thinks that's funny. Sure. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. But it's true. There's just no reason. That, I've never heard it phrased that way before. It, it, the vagina is a self-cleaning oven because you don't want to put anything in there. You are, look, we've got 90%. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm leaving. <laughs> We just, we just saw 30 million people go click. Yeah. <laughs> no, a lot of the guys are walking out. That's yes, right. Like, All the men are all gone. All the guys are going, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, eh, hey, Tim? <laughs> OK, Mr. White Sox, OK. No, this isn't this your biggest fear? You come to an Oprah show, and you know, you're a big White Sox player. I'm just trying to be low key here. I really am. <laughs> big White Sox player, and when you go back and you say to the team, what do they say? What are they talking about? They were talking about my JJ! <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm gonna get ragged on yeah. big time. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back.
Coming up, everything you wanted to know about Brazilian waxes, but mm, didn't really want to ask. We used to douche in the 50s, women douched all the time. And well, then, they, then we stopped douching. Well, here's a couple of things. First of all, African-American women douche twice as frequently as white women do. It's, so there's a cultural element yeah, to this. Yeah, because we mistake. hadn't got the message yet. Well, but but the, oh, there's more of it. The fact yeah. is, you have your own bacteria in there that are for you. You're yeah. supposed to have them there. When you yeah. wipe them out with a vinegar douche, then you're left with repopulating it with whatever happens to be nearby. It may not be what's best for you. But here's the bigger message. If you've got stuff coming out down below that you're not happy with, yeah. deal with it. Yeah. I mean, find out what it is. Yeah. If it's candida, take probiotics. If it's an infection, get treated for it. Covering it up by painting over it with a douche once in a while. Lemon-scented. Lemon-scented douche. Yeah. <laughs> It's not going to solve the problem. No, it's and also, aren't women who douche more likely to have something? They're more likely to get ectopic pregnancies. That's They're okay. more likely to get infections that rise up. They can cause infertility. So it's a big problem. And that's why I don't think there's any real good reason to douche. Okay. Period. Yes, ma'am. I do family practice. And I, I know you said it's a self-cleaning. But you still have to wash. You still have to clean. And the way to clean is either by... Um, uh, really opening up the labia and squirting I'm glad water. You're doing, I'm, I, I'm glad you're doing this part. <laughs> well. I have to be honest with you, because yeah. I do a lot of gynecological exam. And so, I tell you, it's really nice. No, 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 he wasn't saying don't clean it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, no, 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 but, but you still have sex? to explain. Let's move on. <laughs> because a lot of people... The, the, one thing, the one thing I always tell folks, I, you got to look down there once in a while, right? But, 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 but the one thing you want to do, and I, I tell my daughters this, is, you know, go front to back, right? That's pretty simple. That prevents the urinary tract infections that are a bigger issue uh, for, for most what, what kind of doctor are you? Family practice. Family practice, yes. But people, when they come, please clean, wash well. <laughs> 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 I must say, Jim, we never go this. Yes, I don't know how we got here. Yeah, we were going up here. We normally don't go this deeply into it, Jim. OK, Dion has a question about waxing. And it's not about eyebrows. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Oz. I'm Dion. I'm 28. Lots of my friends have been getting Brazilian waxes lately, and I'm going for my first one tomorrow. So, Dr. Oz, is it safe for me to get a Brazilian wax? <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely safe to get a Brazilian wax. You know, there are different kinds of waxes. The Brazilian wax is taking all the hair off from the front, the back, the bottom. If you leave a little bit in the front, it's called a Sotentrope wax. I don't know, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Exotic names. I don't think is there. Oh. A, there's no buffalo wax. No. You know? <laughs> is there someone here who's actually done a Brazilian wax? Someone here? You, yes. But at, not until recently. Not, not recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. one of the wax gals told me it was more sanitary. Mm -hmm. Well, I, first of all, do you ever sit back at night and think, why do I have pubic hair? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why do you have pubic hair? Why? <laughs> It's, it's, I, I is there a reason it. for I it? Yeah, I actually think about this. I mean, it's sort of curious about why would you have hair there? Well, this does two things. One, it prevents chafing, because it, it actually lubricates the skin folds that are moving over each other. Yeah. But the other more important reason is that it actually is a bigger place for the pheromones to sit, the chemicals that you normally secrete that your loved one is actually liking. And so it allows you to have the scent you're supposed to have. That stated, if you want to take off the hair, there's no problem with that. But there are a couple rules of thumb. Yeah, aren't those people walking around chapped, though? No, they don't get chapped. <laughs> I'm just but, thinking, though, because you're saying the hairs are there to try to protect you from chafing. Right, but so if, if they don't have any hairs, and, and then there's that skin, that sort of, I don't know, fragile skin well, rubbing against it's, your... It's fragile for a short period of time. The bigger issue are pimples. And yeah. there, there are things like, like ten skin that you can put on right after you have the waxing that uh, prevents the superficial layer of skin covering over the hair follicles right. so you don't get the pimples. But the key things, actually, I don't think... Because most people don't chafe when they... I mean, have you chafe? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> it's an awkward question. Ask on national television, but, yeah. No, right. I don't. All right, so m m m both, I know a lot of folks that have Brazilian waxes, and they don't seem to have any problems with it. The bigger issue is you want to make sure, A, no double dipping on the wax. Yeah. Right? The wax has got to be clean for you. And take a little bit of the wax and put it on your you wrist. Meaning first. double dipping, like using somebody else's wax? Yeah. Well, you don't want to go to a salon where they use that wax for somebody else. Now you walk in, it's your turn, they put that wax. Yeah. Di different wax. Different oh. wax. 
And the other thing is you want to make sure it's not too hot. Yeah. All right, thanks, thanks. <laughs> we'll be right back. That's what we'll do. We'll be right back. Coming up, more than 100 million Americans have tried it, and she does it every day. What Dr. Oz has to say about teeth whitening. Plus, the scoop on Botox. Is it harmful to you? And later, did the acupuncture treatment work on Angela? We're going to find out. We're back with America's doctor, Dr. Oz, who will answer any question, as you've heard here today. Um, and I heard there was some debate going on, and was it in TV Guide, where the people were talking about whether you should or should not wear the scrubs? Yes. Well, who, who likes the scrubs? Be honest, but you didn't say who doesn't, who doesn't like, like the scrubs. Yeah. Well, okay, the sure. scrubs win. Scrubs win. But why don't you like the scrubs? I think you would look really nice in a suit, so. I've seen him in a suit. I've seen him in a suit. He looks nice in a suit. But everybody wears a suit on the show. Everybody that comes here wears a suit. What? Yes, hi. Hi. But seeing him in the scrubs gives him more of the doctor feel. So we feel like we're really talking. Well, I know you're a doctor. But we're in the office. We're talking right. to you, and we're understanding. OK, Perfect. so the audience was more for scrubs than not for scrubs. Done. There, it's done. I, I, okay. get, I get asked this all the time. Yeah, why do you wear the scrubs? Yeah, I wear, this is what I wear. Well, you've been to the, you know, you come yeah. visit me. That's yeah. what I wear. This is my normal day job outfit. I go to the operating room every single day. I have to wear scrubs. You don't go back and forth. So this is what I wear normally. Yeah. And when I saw you in a suit, I went, ooh. Oh. <laughs> Carol in our audience has a question about a cosmetic procedure millions are having done every day. What's your question, Carol? Hi, Dr. Oz. I'm wondering about the dangerous side effects of Botox. I've had three treatments. I'm wondering if it's safe to continue, or am I putting poison in my body, and there are long-term side effects oh, from good that. Good question. So bo Botox comes from uh, something called Clostridium botulinum, which is a, a, it's what causes botulism. You know when the can, you open it up and it starts to go, shh, don't eat it? Right, that's botulism. Very small amounts of that do the same thing. They can block the ability of nerves to stimulate muscle. So some of the, the lines between the eyes, the crow's feet, they're caused by muscles that keep squinching back and forth, and they create a hinge in your skin. Yeah. So the, the Botox injection blocks that. It works for four months or so. It's not dangerous to continue to do it, but you got to get someone who knows how to use it. Now, everybody who's a doctor in America can put Botox in you, but not everyone knows how to do it right. And what does it do? It keeps your skin. I see people, their face doesn't move. Well, that's why I don't like it, personally. I mean, aesthetically. Stand up, let's see. Is your face moving? <laughs> Yeah, do that, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I have a it moves. Right here. Yeah. But look at I me, mean, look at your face. If you didn't have facial expressions, if you were like this all the time when I was speaking to you, yeah. right, it wouldn't have quite the same yeah. amount. I've interviewed people, they're only moved from right here, right there, they're talking, they're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, I mean, and it's awkward because you're supposed to be able to read people's faces and, and judge their emotions from how they're forming. So you response. should get, get it done, but get it done sparingly. Sparingly and get it done by someone who's good at using it, plastic surgeons, it, the dermatologists, people if like you're gonna to get it, it done. If you're going to get it done. And when you get it done, what does it make you feel? Well, it gets rid of that little mad face, you know, in between the, the Don't eyebrows. Don't get mad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm pretty happy, but, you know. So is that all it does? It just moves from here to here? It just flattens it but out. But aren't there some people that are getting it here? Because yes. I've seen some people where their face doesn't move. Right. You, well, you can get it for the crow's feet. Any, any muscle, the, the uh, muscles around the eyes are circular, so they scrinch the skin. Yeah. So you can block the crow's feet here. Uh, you can block the middle of the eye. I would be eye. more worried if you got it in crow's feet. You don't have any crow's feet. Well, if you were going to get it, if you were going to get it, would it could it not seep into your eye? That's one of the well, it, it, the the eye innervation is in the back of the head. So when you look in your someone's eyes, yes, it's the only way you can see their brain. I'm looking at your brain right now. Wow. Because That's the big. back of the eyeball is the brain, and you can, there's a little hole where we see forward that I can look in. So when we examine patients, the reason we look in your eyes is we're looking at your brain. Wow. It's the only way that we can do it without obviously taking your skull off. Oh, so when you come in and you do that, you say, and you do that, you're doing that to look at my brain? Yes. You're not trying to see what my eyes are like? No, I, if I was looking, the white part of the eye gives yeah. us clues, for example, of jaundice, uh, because if your liver's not working right, yeah. and, and other subtle clues. But what, you see the, the black middle part of my eyes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. If I look through there, which I can do with a little light, yeah. I can see inside yours right now, because the light's in the studio. I can see how beautiful your brain is. <laughs> <laughs> Great, where's Lindsay? Lindsay, OK, what's your question? Um, I have been bleaching my teeth every day for the past three years. I'm obsessed with it. I can't get away from it. I bring a tray and bleach with me when I spend the night. My friends and family think I'm crazy, but is there any long-term effects with bleaching your teeth? I mean, am I helping my teeth or hurting them more? Lindsay, your friends and family are right. You really shouldn't bleach every day. Now, let's talk about bleaching for a second. It is the most common cosmetic procedure done in the country. 
So it's not a bad thing to do. The way it works, by the way, is hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. It sends a, an oxygen molecule that cleans off the front of the teeth, and it goes into you know, oral oblivion. As it sort of cleanses, it makes it look white. It takes stains out from tea and uh -huh. coffee and other foods you may have eaten. However, if you hydrogen do it too peroxide. much. So could you just take a little peroxide and rub it on your teeth? Well, that's what these sticks do. They actually have products that have strips, and there's some rub-ons. However, if you get too thin, you can see through your teeth. That's not good, and it doesn't get better. It makes your teeth look blue. Plus, if you get it on the gums, you can damage the gums. So you should limit yourself to a two-week treatment or a really great idea is to get a dentist to do it and then follow it up with a week or two of doing it yourself. But doing it every day is a mistake. What you should do every day is floss. Do you floss every day? I do floss every day. <laughs> and so, with the, okay, so let's talk about why you're now addicted to whitening. What's I, going on with you? I don't know. I've been doing it since junior prom of high school, and I've just been doing it every day. Like, I feel like if I skip a day, my teeth are just yellow. And Do your teeth hurt at all? They are not sensitive at all. Right. At all. Okay. Well, we should look into the issue of why she's doing that every yeah. day. <laughs> I want to know about the junior prom deal. Yeah. <laughs> no, but your family's right. That is not normal to do it every single day. You're like a little obsessed with it. It's what yes. you're sounding like. Yes, yes. ma'am, I am. <laughs> yes, I spent hundreds of dollars on bleach and stuff, like just doing it, like, I can't get away from it. Okay. <laughs> well, he said, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back, we'll be right back. Coming up, Cellulite 101. How do you get it? Can you get rid of it? In a recent, uh... In a recent Oprah.com poll, more than 90% of you admitted to having this problem. Hi, Dr. Oz. My name is Deatra. I'm 39 years old. I've always been a slender size and been comfortable wearing whatever I want. But after I had children, I've been stuck with this cellulite, this problem that I call the cottage cheese effect. So, Dr. Oz, what is cellulite? Do all women get it? How do we make it go away? Yeah. Thanks, Deidre, for asking the question we all want the answer. You're, you're perfect to ask. Look how beautiful she is. You know, it's not just about having extra pounds on. People get cellulite because it's genetic, and we're supposed to have these fibrous bands holding our skin to our muscle, right? Dogs don't have those tetherings. That's why their skin moves all over the place. Uh huh. Now That's we're why you can pick up the puppy just like that and exactly doesn't hurt it. But yeah. humans have that tethering. So I have an animation for you. Okay. This is how fat accumulates. So let's say we're looking at you. You're about to peruse your refrigerator, right? You're going hunting, and there you are as you're beginning to open the door. Let's go into your leg and see what happens as you begin to eat the food in that refrigerator. You've got cells. That's a fat cell. Now that fat cell is being nourished by blood coursing through your body. So you had I don't know a candy bar, and now those chemicals, the sugar, starting to float out into the periphery, and these cells are fat cells. And they literally, their job is to suck in as much fat as they can. They will literally squish it out. It looks like a huge marshmallow. And these marshmallows begin to touch each other. And as they touch each other, you begin to push bigger and bigger and bigger molds of this stuff, and you tether. That, that fibrous attachment that you naturally have in the back of your leg. But you put all this together, guess what happens? There is Cellulite. <laughs> and there are all kinds of treatments, yeah. right? That's what yeah. Have you ever had any? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have the cellulite. I haven't had the, tr haven't had the treatment, because I don't believe anything works. What works? If you're going to tell me something works today, I'm going this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> really. Seriously. Okay. But I, I, all I've heard is that those creams, you know, that's just, it's just uh, marketing, that none of the cream, you can't put a cream on and get inside the fat cell. You can't. It's a $3 billion business. $3 billion. They have these new therapies where they roll your legs. And the reason they actually give you a couple weeks of looking a little better is those yeah. blood vessels get swollen. The tissue gets swollen, so it looks a little better, yeah. but it doesn't last. Because you really rolled it around. Exactly. You just rolled up that, uh, yeah. what well, looks like the marshmallows. Right. You rolled them up. <laughs> right. <laughs> and flattened them down for a little while. But it doesn't hold, and, and we'll always be as honest as we can, as you know, on yeah. this stuff. There is no treatment. Here's one more bit of data. The guys don't care that much. They really don't. They really don't. <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> Next up is Amy, who speaks for about 25 million fellow uh, sufferers of this sometimes painful condition. Hi, Dr. Oz. My name's Amy, and I'm 35 years old. I have a horrible varicose vein on my leg. It's lumpy, it's bumpy, and it hurts if I've stood too long or if it's hot in the summer, it'll kind of flare up. If that's not bad enough, 
I have spider veins and they are ugly. People ask me, how come I have such bad bruises on my leg? How do I get rid of my ugly veins? Good. You just said good question. <laughs> okay, so yes. What causes them? Well, what causes the veins is that you actually think about this. How do we get the blood to our tissues? We all know that the heart pumps it there. Yeah. But how do we get the blood back from the tissues? You ever think about that? The way it comes back is as your muscles move, they milk the blood up the veins. The veins have valves that prevent the blood from leaking back downstream again. So when you stand up, gravity's pushing the blood down. That's why you tend to get worse when you stand up. Okay. But if those valves, as you get older, get pulled apart, they begin to leak. And as they leak, they fill those veins with too much blood, and they actually swell up and look like those big worms. Okay, you know, so what do we do about it? <laughs> well, if they're large veins, then you actually should take them out. And by the way, if you're not having any problems with it, then don't worry about it. I mean, really, the only thing that can happen that's bad is you get ulcers once in a while if yeah. the skin gets thinned out. Okay. So it's not a big deal. But if you really don't like them or they're hurting you a lot or they're unsightly, we have operations. They're, they're very simple. They don't keep you in the hospital overnight to take these veins out. Okay. The spider ones, the really small ones, we can inject those with solutions that actually burn them. So the walls of the veins collapse and stay stuck. So no blood can get in them. That way you don't see them anymore. OK. Yeah, do you have a question about that? I do. You're saying the saline injections. I've also heard of the laser treatments. Is one better than the other? Because I haven't worn shorts in years. Of <laughs> and, well, um, I want you wearing shorts again. And there's no huge difference between the saline injections and the laser therapies, except the laser works better in some skin types than others. The laser works on the principle that you can see a different color in the vein than on the skin, uh, whereas the injections you can put in just about anything. But you can try them both, and you should try them both if they're really bothering you. But yeah. again, there's no danger to having varicose veins. Does it, how long does it last? Is it a forever thing? Or it, I hate needles. No, no, no it, does, it's, it lasts forever once it happens, because you literally scar down the veins. They're gone. Does lasering work on black skin? It, it doesn't work as well on black skin. That's what I heard. Yeah, you need to have a differential. The way lasers work is they pick up one wavelength. It has to be different from your skin wavelength. Yeah. So that's why it doesn't, for example, work very well for hair. Trying to get rid of hair with lasers and black skin individuals is much more difficult because you can't tell the difference between the hair and the black skin. And you okay. burn both. OK, then. So could black people have LASIK eye surgery? Different thing. La the la LASIK surgery on the eye works in an area which in all humans has similar colors and pigmentation. Okay. Okay. So you don't have black skin and the melanin from it blocking the path. OK, we'll be right back. Coming up, this sun worshiper gets a big wake-up call from Dr. Oz. That's next. Next up, Jen, a sun worshiper who has a question about her skin. Hey, Dr. Oz. My name is Jen, and I'm 32. And my question for you is, I love being in the sun, and I think I look so much better with a tan, but how can I tell if the sun is damaging my skin? Well, before we talk about how it damages your skin, you actually need to get some exposure. You want to have enough sun exposure to build up the vitamin D in your body, which is the, the important vitamin that helps prevent cancer, but also makes your bones strong. Yeah. The and if you don't get it. If you don't get it, you have an increased risk of those. But here's the big deal, Oprah. Most folks think they're getting it because they're going into the sun. Up here in Chicago in the winter months, you don't get enough sun. In I'm fact, just going to ask. That's what if, you, if you live north of Atlanta in the winter months, you generally will not get enough sun. So getting about 15 to 20 minutes of direct sun exposure is good for you. Now, too much is more than 15 minutes of direct sun exposure. And in particular, my rule of thumb is make sure your shadow is bigger than you mm -hmm. when you go out. You want to have a long shadow cast because it means the sun's going down or just coming up. That means you won't get too much. But you've got to use sunblock most of the time. What about all those people baking on the beach for hours? Big mistake. Well, you know what? We have an animation of what's going to happen to you if you keep doing this. Yay! <laughs> so this is what actually happens to what your skin. So let's freeze it right there. Okay. So this is what your skin looks like. It looks complicated, but it really isn't. You've got hair coming out. Hair has, by the way, little glands that actually secrete little oil into the hair. You want that to lubricate the skin. Oh, well, excuse me. I'm, a, I'm confused. Is this a, like a little box it's in? Yes. We actually, we put, this is your skin. Yeah. We actually cut like that. Okay. So you can see the side of it. Okay. And I want to show you the side of the skin. And so you can see sweat glands here. And these are nerve endings. Yeah. So that you actually can feel when people are pressing on you. And as you look at this up close, you begin to see these layers come into focus. That's the dermis and the epidermis. You want these to stay rubbery and flexible. That's a little tube going up there's there. There's a sweat gland. OK. And that's the blood vessels that make you blush. Now watch this. If you push down when you're young, you get elasticity. It jumps. It yeah. moves. Right? It's yeah. fun. Now, if you get too much sun, the sweat glands shrivel up. The sweat, of course, dries up. The skin itself begins to get desiccated like this. It looks arid, like you're in a desert, and you're destroying this covering. 
and therefore the skin can't protect itself. You know, it looks like it's sub-Saharan Africa. And so if you look at this picture of the skin, how do you protect yourself? Well, what sunblocks do is they cover over your skin, so you can block away these rays. But normally, if you don't have it, these rays go right deep okay, down. Okay, can, can I stop and ask a question? Stop. So a 30, a 15 versus a 30 has more of that layer? Is that what it is? No, the, this is a great, great point. The way we grade our suntan lotions is based on how they block UVB radiation. Okay. Right? That's what causes sun burning and sun tanning. That's these white lines that I'm going to show again in a second. Those lines are blocked by the SPF factor, sun protectant factor. If you put on 30, it means it's denser, not thicker, denser. So it blocks more. There's more particles in that thin little layer as okay, opposed to it. less particles here. Got but it, this it. is a big point. What causes skin cancer and skin aging is not predicted by the SPF factor. So those numbers are there, and we like them because they're easy to read, but they don't tell us about UVA radiation. It's the A radiation that causes that damage. It causes cancer and, and skin aging. aging. So, so what are we putting it on for? Well, no, well, it, because <laughs> nowadays, yeah. most skin suntan lotions are adding extra protectant factors to protect both against the A rays and the B rays. But we don't have a grading system for the A rays. OK, so the 30 and 15 or 8 or whatever. That helps with sun burning and tanning, but not with the aging. So what I always tell everybody is the average American puts on one quarter of what we should be putting on. Wow. So we put in 30. But 30 is so thick. You might you look like you're wearing a mask. Well, well I don't actually, you, you may notice it. I'm, I don't notice it until I get to 50. At least wear 15, which gives you a, some protection. And if you can afford 30, it's a nice day for you to doesn't bother your skin. So what you're saying to her, basically, is that she's going to be all cracked up in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lying out in the sun without sun uh, protection. But let me just show you what happens, because if, if we can go forward in the animation, you'll see that if you put on protectant factor that doesn't have the UVA radiation, it goes right through and injures the tissues deep down. And that's actually what we worry about much more. Now, how does the body protect itself? You've got melanin. That's what makes your skin dark. It's being secreted just underneath where that, uh, uh, those, that dermis is. And that melanin gives you a dark tan, but also as you get older, it can lead to that, which are these sun spots that we see, age spots that we see on our hands and our faces sometimes. And that's caused from melanin that, that stained your skin at, at a deeper level, and okay. doesn't get better. And we and black people have more melanin, obviously. A lot more melanin. Okay. And why does black not crack? Well, black doesn't crack because you have automatic sun protection factor. Automatic sun yeah. protection you factor. You can't you you can't walk out with less than SPF 50. You really? get up in the morning, you've got that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so there's no point. You know, it's, it's much less of an issue. Where and by the way, most of the sun damage. <laughs> Really? So we're like walking around SP 50s. Well, the, here's the, <laughs> well, the thing, though, Oprah, is that most sun damage occurs before you're 20 years of age. Really? And once you damage the rubber bands that give it that bounciness that I showed you earlier, yeah. it doesn't come back. It doesn't come back. So it's the kids we've got to So you can't get back so, elasticity. You can't. No, once it's gone, it's gone. Okay. So that's why it's so important. That's why I think actually sun protecting clothing that they're, they're now being made, they're, they're, they're for different. Kids. You should be for, doing kids, for kids, it makes a lot of sense. Coming up, did the acupuncture uh, treatment work on Angela? We're going to find out if she's got that woo feeling <laughs> when we come back. Angela just finished her very first acupuncture treatment. Acupuncture. She was hoping it would uh, help relieve her neck and shoulder pain. Oh, wow. That's you? I guess so. That's <laughs> did you have to take all your clothes off? Yes. Yeah, that's why we weren't filming it back there. <laughs> And how many needles did you put in her, Dr. Shu? About 12. About 12? Yeah. OK. And you put it right there on the shoulder? Yes. OK. And do you, you, do you notice anything now? If you don't, then don't say so. No, I do. I feel rejuvenated. The pain that I had was a constant radiating pain, mm -hmm. and I don't feel it, literally. I don't, don't feel it, no. I feel wonderful. You do? I feel. I need to get 12 more after the show. <laughs> no, seriously, because I don't want it to be like, yeah. well, you've seen those shows where they go whoop, and there no, you are. Yeah. literally, because yeah. the pain that I had was constant, aggravating. Sometimes I can't sleep. That's how bad it's been. And were you in pain when you were sitting here earlier? Yes. You were? Yes, I was. And, you, and now you don't have any? No. It, he... So would you do it again? Oh, definitely. So, Because how long does this, this happy little feeling last? <laughs> well, it, it lasts, uh, it can last a day, two, three, four, 
the key is to have a few treatments back to back to back so it wow. builds up on itself and eventually she'll she'll have no pain at all. Really? I'm gonna get in my knee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, Angela, and thank, thank you, you, Daniel Shu. Thank you. To find out more about acupuncture. It's a new thing. Energy medicine. Energy medicine. Go to Oprah.com. Dr. Mamet Oz's book is called You on a Diet. And it is in bookstores right now. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you.